All right, First Chronicles 17, let's call this one Before You Build, because in this chapter, David is going to look at the house that he's built for himself and the place that he has built for God. And he seems to be at least a little bit embarrassed about the fact that he's gotten a tent for God's ark, but a house that seems super nice in comparison. And so he is going to be moved to try to build a house for God. He's going to consult Nathan, let him know what's on his mind. At this point, David has been successful enough that Nathan's going to say, do whatever seems good to you because God is with you. However, God is going to step in and speak to Nathan and let him know you need to go back to David and tell him it is not for him to build me a house. However, as we've mentioned before, this is not the first time we've heard this story. God is going to encourage him instead of allowing him to build a house. He's going to give him a snapshot of the future, letting him know through Nathan that even though it's not for you to build me a house, um, I've taking you from looking after those sheep to basically make you a prince over my people. I have been with you as I have basically leveled your enemies before you, and I will continue to be with you as I make your name great. And it's not just you. God is telling him that he is going to make a place for Israel, but not just a place for them to exist, but a place for them to exist in peace. And so he is going to even more subdue David's enemies before him, allowing him uh, an heir that he is going to, uh, as it's going to say, raise up and not only raise up, but establish for whom he is going to make a firm foundation moving forward. And it is that heir who is going to build a house for the Lord. But the thing to understand is after David gets this encouragement, I'm pretty sure we've already mentioned that part of his thanks here is similar to the thanks we've seen in a previous chapter where he itemizes the things that God has said he is going to bless him with. And so his thanks goes beyond just a generalized, thanks God, to a specific appreciation for the things that God is giving him. And so in itemizing his thanks, it seems that David is going beyond mere gratitude to show the way in which he intends to care for the things that God is about to give him. But as life goes, it seems that every high, and this being a high point of God's encouragement to David, every high seems like it has a corresponding low. One we don't necessarily have to take, but for David, one of the things that's going to follow this encouragement from God is his whole situation with Bathsheba, her basically being Uriah's wife, David sleeping with her and having Uriah killed to cover it up, which reminded me of Psalm 127, which says, unless the Lord build the house, those who build it labor in vain. Understand in life, we have the right to build however we want, but even for David, a man after God's own heart, God makes it clear just as he is holding David's enemies accountable for the things that they have done, he is likewise going to hold David accountable for the way in which he grows his house. Understanding that he didn't just sleep with Bathsheba, he took her on as a wife after he had Uriah killed. And so as much as David served God and was famously called a man after God's own heart, God held him accountable for the way in which he built his house. And likewise, we can expect the same. God will hold us accountable for the way that we build, even though we are free to build any way we want. And the value in chapters like this sometimes seems to be the way that they can give us a moment to pause and ask God to help us see the ways in which we might actually be building in ways that deprive our homes of the peace they actually deserve.